Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. It's、uh, early as usual, and today we're going to continue with our discussion for week number four lecture, which will be covered in your written test number one next week. Right? We'll talk about it. And as usual, I'm going to make announcement,、uh, the same announcement as before,、uh, like yesterday. But for those of you who are only attending today, I definitely should let you know as well. Right? Right. Let me talk about the announcement first of all. Okay. Basically,、uh, several things. Number one is related to your written test number one. Okay, so this these items over here, you, you already received the announcement from me yesterday, so you should really know、uh, know about them already. But let me just reiterate the points. Your written test number one will be due next、uh, Monday or Tuesday. You can choose the time. However, notice that the start time has been revised to be thirty minutes later. Right, just to. Accommodate your fellow student who may actually have some other in-person、uh, activity, maybe right before the session. Right? Let me show to you where you can look up for the、uh, time. Go to lectures page, and you can scroll down to、uh, over here under week number three. You'll see、uh, the guide over here. If you open it up, you will see that's the revised start time. The duration for the test remains unchanged. You still got thirty minutes、uh, as originally scheduled. But just the start time is gonna be either four thirty p.m. on Monday, or maybe nine a.m. on Tuesday. You can choose whichever one that's convenient for you, right? You don't really have to attend the uh, Tuesday uh, nine a.m. test if you could actually make it on Monday. You can definitely feel free to go to Monday session. That's fine too. Right, and all other policy remain the same.、Uh, make sure you know about the coverage, and also there is one example.、Uh, I wouldn't say it's a really complete test, but just some example questions over there. On the E class made available to you, right? If you click on the、uh, under written tests on the E class, if you go there, you will see.、Uh, well, so far we got thirty, thirty、uh, students attempting for that. But you can attempt for as many times as you like,、uh, and then、uh, just get familiar with the format. It's mainly the format I want you to get familiar with. And if you、uh, let me just show to you, right? You will see that the very first information sheets I put at the front, right? The example questions are only meant for familiarizing you, uh, for the format and workflow for the test, and they don't necessarily cover all the topics that you're supposed to study. So I would say use the example question just as a guidance about you know maybe some parts you should really focus, and also maybe uh the formats uh of how things can be like uh during the test. But you definitely should study all the topics that's really outlined in your test guide, right? And also, the test question themselves maybe、uh, tend to be on the easier side, right? They may not be exactly how the、uh, like a they may may not exactly matching the level of difficulty in the actual test, right? The actual test may contain more questions and also maybe harder questions as well, right? That's uh very uh, standard. Already, so that's about written test number、uh, number one. Do you guys have any questions about written test number one? Anyone? You can feel free to ask me now. Just about written test number one. Anything that's unclear to you, you can feel free to raise it up. Anybody? Um, professor. Yes, please. Hi. Um, I want to ask you that since we're in section C, uh,、mm -hmm. is it, we can do it in on Monday as well, right? Correct. That's correct. Online, right? It's possible. It's online. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, yep.、Yeah, uh, I think、uh, that could be a common or、uh, at least kind of new thing. So, I will try to send a e class announcement just to emphasize. But you're right. Uh, doesn't matter which section you are enrolled. You can either attend the four thirty on Monday if that works better for you, or you can take it uh the nine a.m. uh on Tuesday. Either one is okay. Yeah. As long as you are enrolled in one of the sections, then you're fine. You definitely uh as long as you got access to e class, that'll be fine too. Already, All right? Any other questions for me to clarify、uh, regarding、uh, written test number one? Okay, very good. Hearing none, seeing none, you can still ask me、uh, during the session. That's okay.、All、right. The next one、uh, to remind you about would be the assignment number one. Right. It was released since last Monday, so it's、uh, the deadline is definitely approaching. It will be next Tuesday. Right. Let me show to you where you can find out. Uh, what, what the ex,、uh, precise time it will be for you to submit? Okay, let me show to you.、Uh, if you go to、uh, E class, did I close it? It seems like I closed it. Okay, let me just go there again. Okay, bear with me. 
All right, so let's go to uh, go under assignment instructions. If you go there, eh, you will see the deadline has been there, right? It's going to be 2 p.m., all right, not midnight. 2 p.m., Tuesday, February 15th, right? So I would suggest if you really think that you might be quite occupied by your written test number one and also maybe other uh, other coursework, so I would suggest try to make your submission maybe way before Tuesday, right? Just uh, make sure you as you plan your time. And I, I'm gonna set an automatic uh, like a closure of the uh, submission. So as soon as we reach uh, the 2 p.m., it's gonna be closed automatically. Uh, that's beyond my control. All right, so please make sure you submit in time. Don't really take chances to say, oh, maybe I can wait for another 10 or 15 minutes beyond the deadline. Please don't do that. All right. Alrighty. Uh, so that's about assignment number one. And the last one, it's just about your lecture number five. Right, so for your lecture number five, I'm going to postpone that to next Wednesday, but don't worry, it's not going to uh, delay any of the subsequent lectures, right? Let me just show to you what I meant, just quickly, just to clarify. If you go to the semester calendar, we are now over here on the 10th of February. So uh, suppose, uh, I'm supposed to release week number five, but I'm going to shift it to next Wednesday, for which we didn't schedule anything anyway, right? So I'll shift it to there. So hopefully after the written test number one, you will be uh, more uh, maybe mentally ready and physically ready. You can take some rest and then you can start with your lecture number five, which is quite important. We're going to talk about linked list and also we're going to move on to talk about different data structure, especially uh, hopefully I can get there. I can talk about the interesting ideas such as maybe circular array, which would be very, very interesting idea. And also about maybe the resizing strategy that we spoke about before. Well, we'll see how much we can fit in into the lecture. We'll see either week five or week six, either one. And then after the reading week, we should really start talking about trees and graphs. So that'll be uh, the remaining big topics for the rest of the semester, right? They're coming. And for your programming test number one, you might be wondering, I will confirm with you at least one week in advance. So you can expect roughly, you can re uh, expect to receive an E-class announcement from me to say your test guide for programming test number one is ready around the 18th of February, right? You got at least one week to get ready, right? It's more likely that you will be online, more likely, but I'll definitely confirm when I release the guide, right? Just wait for that, okay? Okay, so that's about lecture number five, and that's about all the announcement I'd like to mention. Do you guys have any questions related to um, anything about the course before we dive into technical contents as usual? Anyone can feel free. All right, I'll pause for one more moment in case you're still thinking. Otherwise, I think we should go on. Uh, so yeah, uh, I can start by just telling, uh, informing you very quickly about what we covered uh, yesterday uh, in the Q&A. I think we covered quite many interesting topics. I'll just uh, give you a very quick uh, walkthrough, very quick so that uh, you, you can uh, maybe choose to watch the recording from yesterday, right? As usual, if you want to look for the recording from Wednesday, just go to the same week. Uh, if you go for week up, oh, exactly here, under week number four, right? So these are the stuff from yesterday. And by the way, it, it turns out uh, we didn't really uh, get a chance to really move on to the remove nth, uh, the nth node from the end. So we didn't even uh, go over the question itself. So I think that, that would be you guys' benefits. So we're gonna go over the entire problem today. And I think as studying this problem here can also somehow indirectly help your written test number one. Let's do that today, right? But before that, we'll answer any question you might have. But if you want to go on to uh, watch some of the parts for the recording from yesterday, this is where you find it, right? And also the notes and also some source code. Let me very quickly, uh, give you an idea of what we covered yesterday, right? Very quickly. Now, yesterday we basically talked about, number one, just to clarify about a running time for uh, get node at. Some of your fellow student was wondering about why it should be linear time to get a node at a particular index. So we're talking about the worst case, right? That's number one. And number two, it's just about clarification about style. Whenever you want to structure between uh, error conditions and also non-error conditions, how can you structure the code? Should you really need the else part over here? So my conclusion was, it's mainly a personal style. It's really no right or wrong. If you really want to make your code as simple as possible, in that case, you can definitely choose this one. Nothing wrong with that, all right? 
Right, and then uh, the next one is really about a little bit of fix about the uh, uh, add add method that we spoke about in the lecture. So we actually missed one edge case about if we want to add add a particular index which corresponds to the size of the uh, link list, right? It were the chain of nodes. For example, let's say we got one, two, and three. We got three nodes in the chain. In that case, if I say I want to add an index three. At the moment, index three is simply just off the bound. So that will actually be valid, but it simply means that we want to add as the last node for this particular uh, element, Alan, for example, right? So that's why we're missing this particular edge case, meaning that if size is equal to i, we're going to add last, right? That's something you can also look into details about how things should work, right? The next thing we'll talk about was about mainly about automatic man uh, memory management, about why you, you will need, uh, for example, for the remove first, you will need these uh, three lines of code to make sure not only that you actually set up the uh, pointers, uh, like a references pro appropriately, but also you want to make sure the the node that's being deleted must be somehow garbage collected uh, at some point, okay? That's something you can also uh, watch for the discussion, All right? That's one part. I think uh, the, the, the next one is also similar to garbage uh, collection issue. So by it's for the different method, you will be remove at. I believe this is one of the exercises you are actually assigned in lecture. I forgot is either lecture number three or lecture number four, right? You can uh, look it up. I think that there were quite a good number of uh, basic methods I assigned to you ex uh, as exercises. I will highly recommend you actually do them. And they're quite easy to actually get right. And then make sure you test them to make sure that's the correct code. And if you got any trouble just to complete the basic methods uh, exercises, reach out to me. I still got office hour today. All right. All right. So this part here, that's the solution. And however, the solution is not exactly right. As I pointed out yesterday, you can definitely do some additional exercise over here to fix it. All right. And the final question we spent quite a bit of time yesterday discussing that one there. Number one, it was it's not going to be covered by written test. Number one, it's a little bit more advanced usage for the generics. This might be something I can include in the official lecture, maybe at some point later, but not for now. All right. Uh, basically, <clears throat> without talking too much detail, which which, can, which will take uh, too much time. So whenever you got generic parameter E, that's declared over here, you can say more about what you can, you can expect from E. So remember, whenever we talk about static type uh, for an object, it specifies the expectation of that particular type, meaning that what kind of methods you can call upon uh, any objects of that particular static type. So here, if you only declare E over here, only E, let's say without this part over here, that means E has nothing that you can assume to be called upon. It will be as if you actually put something like objects, in, in which case you cannot expect anything to be called on E. But now if you really want to say, you want to assume more about E, you can say the following, you can say extends some class over here, person, right? In that case, you will be able to, for example, this the elements of type E, right now we know that it extends from person. In this case, we can say copy and uh, get BMI. I also went deeper to talk about what if we got some subclass over here, how can you make sure we can actually somehow check the E safely and let, uh, and let us call the method on the subclass as well, right? That's something you can see as well in this part. It's uh, some exercise we did yesterday in detail. You can also refer to it. Alrighty, so that's basically what we said yesterday. So quite a bit of discussion about the various issues. That's why we didn't really get into uh, that particular problem, uh, which we can talk about today in detail. All right. Okay, uh, before I start talking about this extra problem of singly linked list, do you guys have any questions related to the lecture before I move on? Anybody? I'll pause a little bit longer, so in case you actually want to uh, phrase the question. Because if you have no questions, I'm just going to move on to uh, that extra problem, so we can do it together. Um, professor? Mm -hmm. yeah, Go ahead. Uh, for, the, for the written test one, um, we're only focusing on week one, two, three, and four, right? That's correct. One, two, three, four. The lectures, the, the, the recursion part you took over, that's, that's not going to be included, right? It's not included, but well, make sure you check the guide over here, right? If you take a look over there, you will see that recursion is not covered. 
Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Now you're right. It's going to be week number uh, one, two, three, four for sure. Yeah. Okay. Already. Any other questions? Uh, John. Sorry, I had a question. Um, yeah. For the one where they insert at a certain index. Well, um, why did we also include like I think you said the one we're missing is in, like for if it's exactly the size. Mm -hmm. Does the case where you have dot cover? The case. Uh, okay. I think that that case in some way is not covered perfectly, John. I think you asked a very good question. I think the code as is can properly set. For example, let's say uh, let's say this. Uh, uh, let's just make it clear. Okay. The only thing that's missing there. Okay, let me say this. Give me a moment. Let me copy the code over so I'll make it clear. Sorry, just this part. There we go. Okay, over here. Okay, let's say uh, we have, for example, let's say we call some list. Okay, list dot at at, and then here we can simply say list dot get size. Yeah, which is going to be valid because that means we want to insert as a last note and then e over here and just for quick illustration think about what the list is list actually got some head right so let's not worry about the list itself let's just say the head reference for the list so the head of the list is going to point to some chain of notes over here like that and let's say it's going to go on and let's say this is a second last note, and this is a last note, which will point to no, right? I'll just say like that, no. The current code will do something useful as follows. Let me just, uh, okay, if you think about this, so this line over here is actually going to no before. Actually, it's going to be i minus one over here, right? If you think about i minus one over here, in this case, list.get size, and i will be list.get size. So size minus one. Size minus one is gonna be exactly this node over here, right? That's exact. So that's be would be the size minus one index. So actually we turn it turns out we don't really need the second last node. But anyway. All right, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually simply execute uh, these two, uh, these three lines, which is going to basically just create this particular note over here and make sure uh, it points to wherever E is pointing to, right? Maybe some string value over here, and then it's going to be pointing to null, and then we're going to uh, point to here, right? That's basically what we're doing, which is pretty good. However, we're missing one thing over here if remember we actually said that we actually got a tell reference right originally is pointing to this particular uh note but after doing all these lines over here after all these the new tell should not be this note anymore it should be changed to this particular note that's something that's missing from the original implementation to really handle that uh you got different ways to handle you can say you can just do another if statement over here you can say if after this if the size is uh if the sorry so after this you can say if the uh if the uh, no before is equal to the old uh the old tail or something like that you're going to set a new tail to be uh the new node that's something you can do but i would say the easier way would be just to follow the logic over here because we got some special case before to say i when i is equal to zero it will be as if we say at first but now we can say if the size would, uh, is equal to if i is equal to the size in that case it would be as if we try to say at last i think that that one would be easier because this would be uh once we handle this case over here now when we get to the else part we know that it will be those cases where we don't have to change the tell so it will just work as before so john does it make sense to you 
Yeah, 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 that's the missing part. It's a subtle, but I think that's important. Since we assume that we actually want to declare uh, head and tail, you know, trading the space for uh, for time. So you want to make sure every time you do any mutator, you have to update those uh, two attributes uh, appropriately, right? That's what's missing in the slides. Yeah. Good. Alrighty. That's good. I think I, I, uh, I would say that's one of the most important points uh, that's directly relevant to your uh, written test in some way. All right, any other questions related to lecture? Anyone? Yeah, I can possibly longer because I think it's quite important to really make sure you feel comfortable, at least about a lecture before the written test. And of course, I still got my office hour today and also on Monday. If you want to speak to me about your uh, confusion, doubts, you're more than welcome, right? Especially for Monday, if you want to ask me some last minute questions, Monday, uh, 2 p.m. as usual, all right? All right, I'll pause for one more moment to see if you guys got any uh, questions related to lecture before I move on to the uh, coding problem, which is also relevant, you know, to what we are uh, teaching right now. Yeah, I don't think that one is going to take too long. I think in some way, if you already look at the problem, conceptually, it's not difficult at all, right? Uh, it's literally calling what we have already taught you in the lecture as helper methods. But in the interview context, you cannot really, uh, you, well, you can, but you don't, you don't really have to define helper methods. I think uh, you want to make the method stand alone, right? That's something we'll do. All right. Hearing none, seeing none. Okay, let's now move on to uh, discussing this extra problem. All right, that would be for that would be exciting for us to do. All right, I think for the benefits of of everybody. So in case you really haven't actually looked at this problem, so I, I'm going to give you maybe one to two minutes. Um, if you have already looked at that, you can still think about your solution. How about we just spend two minutes? Currently, it's A57 or 50, uh, A58. Let's uh, let you look at this page over here until 9 a.m. Okay, so, so this is what I want, what I want you to look at. <coughs> Excuse me. Typically, in the interview, you might just be given maybe just uh, this description and possibly some diagram to illustrate what the, uh, what the use cases are, some example. But for now, I'm just giving you something very precise. I give you two JUnit test cases, which we'll start with to make sure at least we pass these two, all right? Right, let's now let you uh, look at the problem here. Let's wait until maybe 9 a.m. in about two minutes, right? So I can uh, start assuming that everybody is familiar with the problem. So we can talk about design and also implementation, all right? Two minutes. I'll mute myself just for now, and then I'll come back in just two minutes. All right. So look at the problem. Think about how you may solve it conceptually, or even you can even go to the link on the lead code if you want to uh, to code it out. I want to show you something. I definitely want you to do even better than I did. All right. I'll show it to you later. All right. I'll come back in about two minutes. I'm still here, but I'll just mute myself.
Okay, one more minute and then we get started. Ah, okay, already now. All right, all right. Assuming that everybody at least know what problem we are solving, right? So I would like to just uh, what well, I would say this one is should not be too bad, right? Uh, any one of you would like to describe how you would like to solve it, just conceptually. What will be the steps you have to take? Number one, I want you to tell me what steps you want to take. Number two, give me some justification about what the running time should be. I think this might be a nice practice for you, right? In the exam or maybe in the written test or in the interview, right? It's very common. Number one, you want to describe your algorithm in, in just in English in different different steps. You don't need to write any code. And then you have to somehow justify to say uh, what the running time is, all right? Any one of you would like to try. And don't be shy. There's nothing about right or wrong when you try something, right? So, uh, if you want, can just speak up. Or if you really want, uh, prefer typing on the chat, that's fine too, right? It's uh, up to you. I really want to encourage you to really uh, give it a try, you know, just to, that should be something you will keep doing beyond this course. You got to design your algorithm in, a, in certain abstract steps before you code it up. And also you want to think about the running time even before you got your code. Anyone would like to try to tell me what the steps you're going to use to really uh, uh, solve this problem, right? I can pause a little longer. Maybe you're still hesitating, right? Already, Daniel, please go ahead. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you could yeah. uh, go through the list and get the size and then calculate okay, the index to remove yeah. that. Okay, so let me just uh, follow what you're saying. Okay, or just write it down. Okay, You're basically saying you're going to uh, go through the list and get a size, okay? Yeah. That seems to be step one. And then? And then once you have the size, you could uh, calculate the index that you want to remove it at. Okay, so now we're going to calculate the index. Do you have a, a specific formula that you think that we can use? I can write it down for now. Calculate uh, index of the node to remove. Index of the node to remove. Okay, let me be a little bit precise. Let's say the size over here, let's say uh, is simply, okay, we just call it size, okay? Let's say we have some local variable and you want to calculate, what's the index? How do you calculate it? What exactly would you write? What's the integer expression for the index? Have you thought about it? Something like size minus n. Size minus n, okay. Looks very reasonable, of course. I would say when you are sketching your algorithm without even writing into code, I think that that's okay. But just be careful because sometimes even one off, it can be uh, very fatal for yeah. our algorithm, right? But I think that's good for now. All right, very good. So, and then anything else? Uh, I think then it's like pretty like the way we've done it before. Like we just remove the node. Uh, make it more make it more specific, as if I'm interviewing you. Huh. Okay. Well, then we have to check if it's the last node. Uh, okay, check to see where. Uh, check to see. You mean check to see if the node to remove is is the last node? Yeah. Okay. To remove is the last node. Okay. What if it's yes? Uh, then you then you remove the last. Yeah. Sure. I think actually we would need the previous node. Aha! Awesome. I was waiting for that. Actually, very good. So yeah, I think uh, you pointed pointed out something extremely relevant to the written test number one as well. Because if you want to remove a node, we learned from the lecture, you if you only get access to the node that you want to remove, it's not very useful. Because to set a pointer, you need a previous node. But for the singly link node, we don't have the previous reference, right? So which step would you like to change? Probably size minus n minus one. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I like that. Right? So index of, uh, of the node, prior to the node to remove, right? I think that's what you meant. Very good. And 
How about do you want to make so far? I like your step number one and two. I think they seem uh, very similar to my algorithm. What about step number three? Hmm. Do you want to keep keep it the same, or you want to simplify that a little bit? Uh, it's up to you. I think it's mainly the step number three that we're still a little bit uncertain. Yeah. I think that you did most of the uh, important uh, groundwork from step number one and two already, but it's only about step number three. You want to be careful. Yeah. You can think about it. Uh, otherwise, I can uh, uh, I can just take over. Do you, you want to sure. say a little bit more before uh, before I have to take over? No, you could just take over. <laughs> okay, no worries. But <laughs> thank you so much. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Ali, would you like to say something before I uh, start? Yeah, uh, can I add to this? So, of course, please uh, help us out. Um, so the first, uh, so the so we're gonna go through the list two times, I think, right? So we have, I, uh, for the first time to get the size, and then the good. second time to actually do the work that we need to do. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have two parallel for loops well not like parallel but like one after, yeah, another, yeah, one after yeah, yeah i see what you or mean. no sorry one no we don't use for loops for linked lists we use while loop uh, yeah actually, yeah actually you, you can convert any arbitrary while loop to for loop as well but i, I agree with you yeah. should, while loop should be syntactically more convenient yeah go ahead yeah go ahead all right so the first while loop is going to get the size and then you're yeah. going to get the yeah, number one the node that you're going to remove and size minus n minus like at first, I think size minus n is fine for the first loop. For the second loop, though, because uh, what you can do is you can have an if statement in there saying if it's at size minus n minus one, then you can also store that in like a, a local, like locally assuming we're in a function, like a locally scoped variable to that mm -hmm. function. Like okay, so you would store that one in there. And then you would also store the one you actually want to remove. And then when you store the one you want, uh, oh, sorry, when you store the one that, so the one you stored first would be the previous. Mm -hmm. And then when you remove the next one, you need to do what we did yesterday. You need to take the, mm -hmm. you have to take that variable, set its next pointer to yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one that you disconnected it from. Sorry, no, the one that's after. So you yeah. would, yeah. yeah, the one that it's after you would yeah. do. And yeah. then. You're definitely on the right track for sure, for sure. Yeah. So the only thing that uh, Ali, I would like to clarify with you just one one more thing. I think that we pretty much agree. You need definitely number one to calculate what the size is, and it's yep. mainly about number three. So let's say once we know, for example, if we know that the size is actually uh five, let's say we got five nodes over there. Let me just draw that right. I think that's something important to actually visualize a bit. Let's say we got five nodes in the chain, one two three, four, and five. So think about indices. Indices wise, it would be index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four, All right? And uh, I think there's another parameter over there, which is called n, like a, a which node uh, counting from the, uh, from, the, from the tail. Let's say for this case, n is equal to two, right? Meaning that this will be the first node from, from the tail. This will be the second node from the tail. So that means we are actually want we actually want to remove the node at index three. So this is why Daniel said correctly at the beginning, size minus n, which will be uh, five minus two, which will be three. Three is basically the node that we want to remove at index three. But only getting to this node is not very useful because as you said, Ali, you have to set a reference like that. That's what you gotta do. So that means you really need to say another minus one also daniel correctly pointed out we need to get to the previous node basically and then to make sure we can set a uh, reference uh accordingly and also make sure you also reset this reference over here so it can be uh you can get garbage uh, collected something like that all right that's very good i think uh, so far we are very good so size minus n minus one is going to be in this case going to give us a uh, value two you guys can think about this guy over here is going to be let me call the previous node right so this is the previous node of the node that we want to remove right so we, whenever we want to set any pointers we want to watch out for this particular node so what we what was uh, what's kind of uh, unspecified in our steps is in line uh, is in step number three 
sentiments that we haven't really spoken about, let's say once we calculate this particular value as being two, what should we do then? So Ali, would you like to uh, say a little bit more? So what, what exactly should we do in step number three? Um, if we're in step number three and we're at size, okay, so you said we're at size minus, uh, size minus n minus one right now. So we're at the previous, so we're at two, but we want to get three. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we're at two, what we need to do is we have to point it to its next next. So we have to point it to three's yeah. uh, next yeah. pointer first. Oh, but we but we actually need to store number three because we're going to disconnect it. So first we would store number three. So we would, uh, so size minus n minus one, one's next is going to be stored. And then mm -hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to take the size minus n minus one, and then we're going to point it to its next next. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then we take our temporary that we store three in, and then what we're going to do with that is we're going to set that to null. Yeah. Because that's the one we're removing. Okay, I'll write very abstractly. Somehow you want to store the node at index three to some temp, and then you're going to yes. reset the two, and then you're going to reset uh, the temp, basically. Because the, the temp is still pointing to this particular three. That's basically right. what we're right? And of course, there's one thing I'm pretty sure you know how to do it. It's kind of implicit. Of course, in order to really get to this particular node, in general, we just need a loop. We just need another while loop. That's kind of a sequential to the uh, the first while loop that we, we use to calculate the size. So we're gonna in line number three, uh, in step number three, we're also gonna say loop, uh, loop to index at size minus n minus one. So this will be the previous node. That's what we're gonna do. Once we get there, we can follow exactly what Ali suggested over here. Right? Awesome. Right? Thank you so much for Daniel and Ali. I think uh, you guys pretty much completed this conceptual sketch about the algorithm. So guys, I want to make sure everybody's okay. Uh, are you okay with just a conceptual idea so far about the three principal steps that we have to take? Number one and number three will require a loop individually. And of course, you really want to make sure you understand. To me, I think the most important part to really get right is about this formula over here. You want to know exactly how to calculate the index, right? Because some people like to think about my indices for list should really start with one, two, three, four, five, and et cetera. That's okay, as long as you are being consistent when you calculate the formula. But for now, we assume that the indices will start with zero. So that's why we have this formula. You want to make sure you understand about how to derive this formula yourself over here, right? So this one is calculating the index of not the node to be removed, but the node prior to that particular node to be removed, right? That's the most important detail I want you to pay attention to, all right? Alrighty, and uh, how about, I, I'll, I'll go back to Daniel. So Daniel, let's say we got one, two, and three. How do you think about the running time? Uh, do, you want me to just, do you want me to just see the answer of what I think it is? Sorry, say it again. What should be the running time? Uh, I think it would be N. It would be N. Uh, okay, so how, would you fi how did you figure? Let's say one, two, and three. What should be the running time for, for them individually? So one, we have to iterate through the whole list. So mm -hmm. that's n. Very good. How about two? Then two is, we're just calculating. So that's constant. Very good. Number three? Uh, so we have to loop to the index. That's also n. Because yeah. it could be last case. Very good. So I think uh, I want to say a little bit more about number three. I think you're basically right. But I would say it's not exactly accurate. So this is how I would say it. We know that line number three, or we, uh, step number three, not line number three. Step number three, basically we want to loop until the index size minus n minus one. In this case, what you have to ask yourself will be, what's the worst case? So let me hi highlight this over here. Size minus n minus one, right? So the worst case will be when the size minus n minus one will be the max, uh, will be maximized. So let me just write it down, okay? It's really important insight to also remember. So the worst case is when size minus one minus, uh, sorry, minus n minus one will be maximized. And in this case, n is basically uh, the, uh, with the minus uh, sign. So that means when n is the smallest, this entire expression should be uh, maximized, right? So that means that implies 
when n is equal to, and what's the minimum value for n? Do we have any assumption over here? Right? We only say that n should be less than or equal to the number of nodes in the input chain, but we can, I could have put another requirements over here just to say n should be at least maybe one. It wouldn't really make sense to say you want to remove the node, uh, node uh, only the zeroth node from the uh, from the tail. It doesn't make sense. It should be at least one, right? Starting from the tail over here, right? So you can you can safely assume that n should be equal to one when it's maximized. In which case, it's going to be the size minus uh, one, uh, minus one. So it'd be basically n minus two. So this will be the uh, worst case. All right. And so the worst case will just be, uh, oh, sorry, let me say it again. It's not really n. Let's not get confused. The n over here in this particular problem is just a parameter, the value over here. The n over here doesn't really denotes the size of the collection, which we typically do. But in this case, what we have is the n over here is, uh, we, what we really meant is the size. So the uh, worst case should be, the worst case should be size, minus one minus one minus two so this will be the worst case so this will still be linear all right all right so we can also say it should be big o of n yeah let me just be precise otherwise yeah, i think uh it's simply because the name of the parameter that could be a little bit confusing for this uh uh problem here big o of the size and big o of the size Right, so overall it's going to be linear. All right. Alrighty, any questions so far about conceptual sketch of the steps before we write the code? And also we can we could already do some runtime analysis based on the conceptual sketch sketch, which is very good, right? You don't necessarily have to really have the complete code in order to do the runtime analysis. You could, but you definitely don't have to. You can do it even before that. Just approximate. Of course, you cannot really calculate a, a precise number of primitive operations over here. It's not suitable just yet, right? All right, before I move on to Java coding, do you guys have any questions? I think uh, the conceptual idea, you already got it, right? Uh, Ali, go ahead. Oh, I have a question. Do we have a tail pointer for this question? Oh, sorry, say it again. Do we have a tail pointer? Do we have a tail pointer in this case uh yeah i don't think we have yeah so if you look at the question itself over here yeah uh yeah i can go to the leco link as well but i think yeah, we the only thing we assume we have will be just the head i don't think the tail is actually going to help you because uh it's a singly link uh singly link node in that case even if you got a tail you cannot really go back right so all uh, right never mind yeah but it's a good thought right yeah. i think uh, this will be somehow very similar to uh, what you're gonna see uh, in your programming test number one. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you some example later. But I would say this is something you want to get into. It's a very small sandbox for you to really program your algorithm. So in this case, whatever you're given in the parameter is what you can assume. I think uh, if you go to that leak code, um, let me go to that leak code link. I want to show you something as well. So that's something you can also look into it yourself. So I think that's the one. Yeah. They also give you some definition over here. So this is the only context we can assume. You can see over here, they assume that we have a list node, uh, like this, pretty much like our node class in the lecture. We got value, or well, like elements, and also we got next. So the only thing is they simply, I, I guess for the convenience for the notation, they didn't really declare the attributes to be private and also got some public accessible mutator for them. But that's okay. I think uh, we just go with what they have. But to be a better style, you better have uh, private attributes and public uh, methods for accessing the attributes, right? All right, so I'm gonna, oh, that's my solution by the way, but we'll go over that, don't worry. And then I'm gonna show you how good, quote, how good or efficient my solution is. It's not too bad, but it's not too good either. But if you guys can think about something better, let me know. All right. But let's go over the solution first, which will be which is extremely consistent with what we taught in the lecture. So you can solve this problem uh, correctly without any trouble. All right. Well, we'll get uh, we'll go back to Lico in a moment. All right, guys. Final call. If you got any uh, further clarification needed, just about how this uh, how we should proceed with the uh, uh, the algorithm. 
So once I uh, start writing Java code, we don't need to hesitate uh, to be hesitant too much because we pretty much know what to do, All right? Alrighty, let's now talk. Uh, dive into coding, which will be the exciting part, right? And I think uh, for you guys, if you want to practice this later yourself, go back to your lecture site, and then you will see under the problems for this week, you will see the remove end uh, from end, right? That's the specification we just saw, and this is like a starter project, which got a JU in the test cases, uh, just two. And also, I gave you the empty body for the method, so you can st start coding right away. Maybe once you understand how to do things, you want you want to practice. Give yourself maybe about fifteen to twenty minutes to see if you can uh, finish that. Right? That's something you can try. Already, I already got to start a project, but something like this. Right? Let me just close these. Right? So we got a list node. That's exactly what's shown in the leak code. I just copy and paste. Right? This part, you don't need to do any. You are not supposed to do anything with it, actually. And we got the uh, test list utilities over here. So these are the two JUnit test cases. And we got the list utility, right? That's the remove end from end, right? So we're clear what you're supposed to do. We, we're going to go to programs and solution here. At the moment, if I run the test, oh, let me do it again. Sorry. Let me right click on this and say run as JUnit test, right? At the moment, nothing passed. Which is expected, right? And let's now go back to the uh, list utilities over here. Let's now program the code, right? We know that we actually basically got three steps, right? Let me just write it down, and then we'll do the code rather fast. Step number one: calculate the size of the chain of nodes starting from the head, which is the parameter, right? That will be step number one. Step number two, calculate the index of the node prior to the node to be removed, right? We need a previous node. If you only uh, get uh, get access to the node that we want to remove, it's not very useful since, since we are talking about singly linked list. And step number three, loop. Uh, let me just say traverse, traverse to the prior node or the previous node. The node, let's say previous, right? The previous node and delete its next node, right? That's going to be the reference setting that we're going to do, right? So these will be your three steps. And we know this is going to be a linear time operation. And this is going to be some constant time operation. And also, this will be linear time operation. So this is why overall the algorithm will be linear time, right? Okay, let's now do it one by one. Okay, I'm pretty sure step one should be rather easy for you. So I'd say integer size will be initialized to be zero. And then the list node, the current will be just a head. So we can now know where we are in the input chain. So while uh, current is not equal to now, and I would say as soon as you create this loop, make sure you do this right away. Otherwise, you may just have uh, have uh, like an infinite loop. Current is assigned to current dot next, right? And then we're gonna say size plus plus, right? So that'll be the size, right? That's step number one, pretty straightforward. And let's now go to step number two. For well, step number two, I want to just go here, right? We just want to calculate the size, uh, sorry, calculate the index, which Daniel already gave us the correct formula. So it's okay, so an integer index of the previous node will be size minus n minus one, right? Done, all right? It's a primitive, right? It's a constant time operation. And now we're going to go on to step number three. However, for step number three, I'm going to give you the correct solution right away, but I can give you some exercise you can try to do. It turns out we have to be careful about distinguishing about this index over here. Think about what this index is doing, right? Let me give you some example. So what if over here, let's say a special case.
let's say we're still talking about this particular uh, chain of notes. We got size one, two, three, four, and five, right? What if we got this? Let's say uh, remove and from n, right? Of course, this will be the head. And then I simply say five. All right, guys, this one's important. I didn't actually, I kind of missed this uh, this edge case uh, when I first submitted my solution to Leetcode. It took me uh, about, well, took me some while, uh, maybe more than a few minutes to really see, oh, this is something I forgot, right? So if you think about what's going to happen over here, in this case, you can see the five over here is exactly equal to the size of the chain of nodes, right? This is exactly equal to the size. And so that means the index of the previous node is actually size minus n minus one, size minus n minus one, which will be minus one. And this minus one over here is something that you have to deal with separately. Because otherwise, because usually when you actually want to go with the index, you should go with some uh, like a legal index, which uh, for which the minimum should be zero. But it's actually minus one. Minus one conceptually simply means the previous, uh, the index of the previous node that uh, that sh uh, that the previous node of the node to be removed is actually minus one. So that means you really just want to remove the first node, right? So that's something you want to uh, like a special case you want to uh, you want to uh, actually uh, deal with, right? Right. That's something I want to mention. Right? Let's now do it. Right. Let's now go back here. So let me just, uh, so we're going to say if the index of the previous node, you can say less than zero, or if you want to make it more explicit, you can say it's equal to minus one either way, right? So this is the case where the node to remove is the current head, right? In which case we actually have to, in which case it'll be easier, right? Uh, what we're still gonna do, uh, do it properly, right? Let me write down the lines. You can definitely do the tracing yourself to make sure you understand what's going on. So this note, old head, well, will be equal to head, right? And then the head will be equal to head the next. <clears throat> and then old head uh, next is will be equal to null. You can think about this guy over here is really trying to, uh, let me just show to you very quickly, right? Head is assigned to head next. Head is assigned to head next, meaning that we're going to say, rather than pointing to this, oh, sorry. Let me just do it again. Uh, head would be assigned to head next. Let me do it again. It's actually easier. Head, rather than pointing to this, is now going to point to this particular note. Not only that, we want to make sure we also got rid of this particular reference so that this can be uh, can be garbage collected at some point, right? That's something you want to be careful. That's the edge case you want to uh, take care of, all right? All right, that's exactly what we're doing, all right? And what about the else part? The else part will be the non, uh, the not, uh, when the index of the previous node is actually larger than or equal to zero, meaning that it's valid. And we can do something about it. And well, we definitely need to get there, right? Because uh, the the index of the previous may be uh, maybe uh, very uh, maybe very far end of the list. In which case, we get a, a traverse to that particular list uh, for, for that particular node. So list node. Sorry. And I'm gonna write something here, and I'll leave one part unspecified to see what you guys might think. Okay. List null, and then I can say previous is simply initially null, right? We'll get eventually get there. And then let's say integer i. So this will kind of tell us what's the current index that we're looking at. And also the current node, uh, we're just reusing uh, this current node. We're just reusing it, right? We don't need to declare a new one. It's reassigned to uh, just the head while something, all right? I'm gonna put this unspecified just for now, right? 
But inside, we're going to say uh, every time we're going to say current is assigned to current the next routine, and also I plus plus just to know, make sure we actually understand where we are in the list, starting from zero. And then we're going to say the previous is simply just equal to the current, right? So when we exit from the loop, so previous one should be pointing to the node exactly at this particular index over here, all right? All right, and then uh, I'll get back to here a little bit. Let's say this one, somehow it was specified correctly, right? So when we exit from the loop, exiting the loop means that previous is pointing to the node at index size minus n minus one, right? So that's exactly the, the index we are targeting, right? Even though this one is quite straightforward, but I think there's still many minor details you want to watch out for, right? I think you really had to code it up precisely yourself. All right, so let's now do uh, what uh, Ali actually suggested before. So we're gonna say list node will be uh, node to remove is equal to the previous one, which you will assume has been set up properly, the next. And then we're gonna say the previous the next is node to remove the next. I'm gonna trace just these uh, three lines together with you. And node to remove the next is equal to null. All right. Let's now just do this one together. All right. Just these three lines. And then I'm going to ask you about what line number 35 should be. Okay. Let's now make sure you understand this part over here. Yeah. For this one, I don't think I need to trace from scratch. Let's just do that one. I think that'll be enough. Okay. Okay. Just these three lines over here. Okay. Right, let me redraw the uh, notes very quickly. So what we got is the head is pointing to uh, the note. Let's say we got five notes uh, like in the test case. So one, two, okay, let me just copy that. Three, four, and five. Okay, so index wise, we actually got zero, one, two, three, and four, right? So the size is definitely actually equal to five. And the call we are considering would be, uh, we got remove nth from the end. Right. Let's use the same uh, test case as uh, as, uh, as I gave to you. It will be over here two. All right. So that's gonna be uh, just the head, and then we're gonna get a two. Right. That means the the index of the previous node is equal to the size minus n minus one, which would be equal to uh, two, right? That's kind of the job that we, we uh, our earlier code, which uh, earlier lines of code would do. Let's now see exactly what's going on. So index of previous node, which will, will be two. So that means the previous node that we assume uh, that, that once we exit from the while loop is going to point to index two, right? So this is something we assume. We assume that this part of the loop is actually going to do exactly that, right? This part, right? So that'll be the previous node. And the node, to, uh, let's now try to trace line by line over here. We go, we start with this. We have another uh, reference over here, the node to remove. The node to remove is gonna be previous node next. Previous node next is exactly over here, right? So this will be another reference over here. Uh, no to remove. And let's now do the next one. Previous the next is assigned to no to remove uh, the next, right? So previous the next should be assigned to no to remove 
the next. So that means rather than pointing to here, it's now going to point to over here. Agree? All right, so let's now do that. Rather than pointing to over here, it's going to point to no to remove the next. So we're going to do this. Right? But we still need one more line. Otherwise, you can see this node over here that's conceptually being removed is still depending on somehow the chain over here. So that means it may not be garbage collected. You want to isolate it, right? So the final line we're doing here is no to remove that next is equal to null, right? So no to remove over here the next is going to be just null. So you can see now this node here is isolated. Nothing is pointing to it. And also, it is pointing to nothing, right? So it's uh, uh, isolated, right? That's basically these three lines will do, right? Make sure you understand these three lines as well. That's also quite important. All right, guys, any questions so far about the code? We're almost done, but not yet, almost. Automatic man memory management isn't so automatic. Well, I would say it's really about, yeah, you wouldn't well the way they de, uh, the way that de, they decide what objects to be really removed uh from the memory is really to see if they got any dependency with the existing objects so in some way we are trying to trick the uh, uh garbage collector to say now i really want this node to be collected so i'm going to make it isolated if you simply don't really care in that case you don't need to do this but i would say it's a good practice to uh, to do so yeah it's still pretty automatic, I would say, because you really don't have to worry about, you know, freeing the memory, you know, for other scenarios. All right, so I think uh, I want to just write one more thing over here. So rather than return now, we're going to say return the head over here. And what I'm missing is this condition over here. Guys, this is my pop quiz for you. What should I write as a Boolean condition? What should I write? To make sure when I exit from the loop, that means the previous reference is now pointing to the node at index. What exactly should I put? You can speak it up or you can just type on the chat. I want a Boolean condition. Boolean. Exactly what to write over here. And I think that you got everything you need over here. Okay. I see one answer over there. Anyone else? If you guys concur with Ali, uh, you can just say you concur. Or if you got another answer, uh, you can type it out. You agree. Very good. Okay. Anyone else? Well, Daniel, you're saying either that or less than or equal to. But you want to make a you want want to take a side. <laughs> you cannot say either that or that. But you guys are getting close. But of course, there's only one correct answer, right? All right. The answer should be over here, I less than or equal to index of previous node. All right. Basically, you can think about I was initialized to be zero. And then when I is equal to zero, it's going to be assigned a current to begin with, meaning that the value of I is not in sync with what previous is, previous is pointing to. So you want to make sure when you exit from the loop, I is uh, simply just uh, just just uh, uh, just above the limits of the, the index that we want to targeting. Right. So in this case, if you say I, if you say I is strictly less than than this, so that means uh, we will exit from the loop when I is equal to index of previous node. In that case, you're not really getting the previous. You're getting the previous previous. That's something uh, I think you should really want to uh, trace the code and think about it. Right. I'll make a note over here. But that's actually quite important. Right. Don't be too surprised if you got some question like this. Right. In the test or exam. Right. But think about it, right? I'm now telling you that's important for the logic. I less than index of previous instead 
Well, ultimately, let previous point to the to the node uh, two links before the. It's a little bit long, but um, when you see the comment, you will see. Rather than getting previous, rather than just getting previous, you're getting previous previous over here. You're gonna get this one instead, right? It's a premature exit. Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, um, it's uh, there might be different ways to express that, but I think it's good to make uh, uh, this side maybe a little bit, I mean, simpler, right? All right, any questions about this? I think that we explained very thoroughly about the logic and also we did the tracing for most parts. I think uh, this one is rather uh, not not too, uh, not trivial. I think uh, it's uh, definitely not challenging. So I'm a little bit surprised why this will be categorized as a median difficulty level in the lead code. In that case, well, you, you guys should, uh, should, uh, should feel proud. You could, you could actually do that. Right, let me now run it. Right, I got a green bar. Right, let me show you something here. And that's something I will invite those of you who might be interested to read it as a challenge, right? Let me just copy this. That's the solution. Let me go back to lead code. What I want to show you is over here. All right, let me just copy and paste, right? And then I'm gonna submit the solution over here. It's not running. Did I, oh. Did I fix that already? Give me a moment. Current is not a uh, while. Illegal start of the type. Why would that be? Current is peculiar. It's now compiling in Eclipse. Did you guys spot anything here? Let me see what I'm uh, really missing here. Give me a moment. For some reason, okay, why was why I was not really rec uh, recognized? Okay, let me just submit again. You know what's peculiar? I'm not too sure when I copy and paste. Maybe there's some special character when I did a copy and paste. Anyway, what I what I what. Well, that you can you can see it's really compiling in the eclipse. I'm not too sure when I copy and paste, it's not really uh, recognizing. Okay, let me just say that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, does it need to be in a method? Because it's not in a method at all. You're in like you're writing oh, code. Oh, thank you so much. You're absolutely right. Thank you. I, I didn't look at the chat. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, John, you pointed out that as well. Thank you. I was wondering about it. Yeah. Alrighty. Now it should be good. Submit. Let's wait. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. So, uh, oh, really interesting, guys. There's something I quite I don't quite understand. At the moment, they actually said it's faster. Somehow, it's faster than one hundred percent of the Java online submission, which is good. But yesterday, somehow, it shows to me fifty-two percent, <laughs> which I thought maybe my uh, solution was not fast enough. But anyway. It seems like it's pretty good. So I would say uh, for Lico, I believe if you uh, sim you don't really, really need to pay for that. I think for this uh, submission here, you may just need to sign up for some account and then you can actually test for efficiency of your solution. Yeah. Yeah. I guess maybe they are simply using some very huge list behind the scene. That's my guess. But I would say this algorithm over here is uh, reasonable, right? Uh, if you can think about like a like a smarter way, cl more clever way to actually manipulate the list, let me know. Let me share with me. Uh, maybe I can share with your classmate as well. John, I believe they test the efficiency simply by trying some very large input. That's my guess. And then remember in the, our very first lecture, remember when, when we said if you really want to measure the running time, you actually just uh, do the... Uh, uh, system dot uh, current time 
in the milliseconds, right? You will just measure what's the time uh, time lapse between your algorithm run for the very large input. I think that's how they compare, I believe, more or less. Right? I think uh, it's nice. I think uh, it's definitely some, uh, I, I would like to motivate you to really try as many as you can. We can do or maybe one or two uh, every week, but you definitely should do more by uh, on your own. I think uh, if you can do cons uh, consistently do what uh, more, uh, more and more every week, you definitely can improve your coding scale as well. Alrighty, I think that's about uh, the end of this problem here, which we did, we definitely discussing uh, thoroughly. All right. All right. Do you guys got any uh, uh, other questions, either related to this or related to your lecture? Anyone? Everybody is happy. Alrighty, I think uh, for next uh, Thursday, since you are lecture number five, I mean week number five will only be released next Wednesday. So I don't think uh, you will definitely. It's not, actually not fair to ask you if you got any questions. I think I still come. I think uh, what I will do is I'll try to see if I can prepare some extra maybe problems for us to solve. Maybe about linked list. Uh, possibly recursion. We'll see which one might be more beneficial, right? Still come. I think we'll do something. May not be as long as a, like a complete session, but at least we can solve some problem, right? All right, guys, final call if you got any more questions. All right, you're welcome. All right. I think, uh, yeah, do, do really work on this uh, these extra problems over here. I think uh, it will definitely help, right? All righty, guys, thank you so much. Uh, take care, and then I'll talk to you. Uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.